It's my joy to welcome you to Grace Assembly. This is our online church and this will be our midweek service. And um, you're so blessed and I'm so blessed for us to be together as we start a new series which is designed to help people to come out of this terrible COVID-19 nightmare and coming out of it not busted and broken but coming out of it in a miraculous way. It is it is a duty the Lord has put upon some of us to help people and when you have help you have no need to fear. But even so coming out of this terrible COVID-19 uh, pandemic and the, its aftermath would require, I must tell you, must require, would require every one of us to pursue spiritual, psychological and technological upgrading. You can't continue the way you used to be. And so the old has passed away and the new is fast unfolding. And instead of being stunned into a state of paralysis or just hiding from this new reality, we need to prepare for it because the future belongs to the prepared. Oh, how I wish you would repeat that and keep repeating it until we all get it. And so in the new order of things, the hope that make it not ashamed is the hope that rides on the back of adequate thorough preparation i will say that again for emphasis now i know someone wants to write that down because this is the truth in the new order of things that are unfolding the hope that make it not ashamed is the hope that rides on adequate and thorough preparation i would like you to join me in prayer father we thank you because we have you and you have us in your hands he that keepeth Israel never sleeps nor slumber as the mountains surround Jerusalem. You, you surround about surround us with the warmth of your love and your loving kindness and your tender message you will not withdraw from us. As we are going through a season that completely destabilizes, disorientates many of us and rightly so because we haven't seen anything like this before. The promise of your presence, ah, the faithfulness of your person assures us that no matter a thousand may fall, ten thousand may fall by our side, it will not come near us. You will keep us to the very end. And so we come to you asking that you help us to prepare adequately and thoroughly so that instead of making people think ah, ah, what happened to their God, where is their God, that by our testimonies we will be able to glorify your name. We ask Holy Spirit that you direct us and change things that we did not want to change and help us to come into the new not busted or broken but come out powerfully to the glory of your name thank you jehovah god thank you jehovah rohi thank you jehovah ebenezer our helper we give you praise in jesus mighty name can't say amen and amen hallelujah um on the thing that of preparing for the new I think the best thing for me to do is to present an example to you. And when I present the example, it is easy to plot a graph of your life and fit it in. So I am going to be presenting the example of Noah. Noah, the Bible says, found grace in the sight of God and we are children of grace. And Noah was saved and that talks about salvation. But there are, there are two things about Noah I want you to pay attention to. Noah was saved from the flood but Noah crashed after the flood it's a question of preparation I read Hebrews 11 verse 7a to you the Bible says by faith Noah being warned by God about things not yet seen nobody had ever seen a flood like that before he prepared an ark for the saving of his household I want you to zoom in on the word prepared I read again Hebrews 11 verse 7a by faith Noah being warned by God about things not yet seen he prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Because of his adequate and thorough preparation for the flood, his family and himself were saved. Fantastic stuff. But what about life after the flood? In Genesis 9 and verse 20 to 21, the Bible says, And Noah, after the flood, began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. 
Then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. And thereafter, Ham saw him naked and he cursed him. The man that found grace brought a curse into the blessed family of God. Only eight of them that inherited the whole earth. And why is that? Because whilst he prepared for the flood, he had no idea he had to prepare for life after the flood. Let me explain that to you. Coming out of the ark. There was a sigh of relief, but the trauma, the psychological trauma of having the place desolate completely. He was not ready for that psychologically. And I'm going to be talking about psychological preparation. I'm going to be talking about psychological preparation. And, and so nothing significant was said about Noah after verse 21 except that he died an unceremonious death i read to you 9 genesis 9 20 to 21 about the man who prepared for the flood but did not prepare for life after the flood and so when he came out of the flood he was not prepared at all for the psychological effect of a desolate earth that had only eight people and there was no social interaction the place was vast and empty and cold and the loneliness that um, and, and that's the effect of uh, the psychological effect of loneliness is that you want to medicate your loneliness and you took to drinking and so the bible says in genesis 9 20 to 21 that noah began to be a farmer he planted a vineyard he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered Ham his son saw him and when he found out he cursed his own son and there were only three young men on the face of the earth. How can you curse what God saved? Because he was drunk. It was his fault. And so the Bible says in verse 28, seven verses down the line, he died an unceremonial death. So when we're talking about preparing for the new, you can prepare for COVID by washing your hands and social distancing. But are you prepared for life after COVID? Noah, the man that found grace, as we found grace, prepared for one, but not the other one. It, it didn't end well. But we, learning from his example, we're going to learn well because we're going to prepare for the new. Allow me to read Proverbs 2.22 and verse 3, the Living Bible to you. Proverbs 23 and verse 2, verse 3, the Living Bible. There the Bible says, a prudent man foresees the difficulties ahead and prepares for them. Hmm. But the simple team goes blindly on and suffers what? The consequences. The consequences of no preparation or poor preparation, they are devastating. The prudent man foresees the difficulties ahead. And there are some coming our way. But he prepares for them. Let me tell you what a simple team is. The Bible says the simple team goes blindly on and suffers consequences that will not be our portion in jesus name but it's going to take a lot more than just prayer we have to prepare for what is coming a simpleton is a person lacking in common sense period but the prudent is a person possessing wisdom and circumspection circumspection let me make that clear is simply being careful to consider all circumstances and possible outcomes and consequences you consider ahead or in the circumstances all the possible outcomes and all the possible consequences of the interplay of things the passion translation of the bible also helps it says a prudent person with insight that god gives with insight he foresees danger coming 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 you can't stop it but but he prepares himself for it but the senseless rush blindly forward and suffer the consequences let me tidy this up by going back to noah noah's story shows the need for psychological preparation when dealing with a traumatic change of seasons Noah's story shows the need for psychological preparation. That's where we start from when dealing with a traumatic change of seasons. And what we'll find that preparation would, would usually consist of psychological detox. Because we're gathering lots of things that is messing with our psychological equilibrium. Uh, 
it will also psychological preparation will also require psychological strengthening because it is the things going on we're hearing is weakening our psychology our psyche and the strength of our mind it will also require emotional restabilization because what we're hearing what we're seeing is making us suffer emotional destabilization when you put all that all that together um, psychological detox or uh, psychological strengthening emotional restabilization in total it's talking about renewal of the mind we're so ravaged we need to renew our mind we have contributors that are going to come in and i know they're they're watching and i'm going to bring them up one by one um, in a minute but let me talk to you about garbage in garbage out i'm sure you've heard that before garbage in garbage out talks about what you what you take in is what you give out and so all this watching mindless videos on the internet on your phones on the whatsapp on the and the, the tv just keeps really out bad news to us it's garbage in and if you're not careful you process the garbage and you bring garbage out so garbage in garbage out results in people becomes becoming psychologically destabilized and so they become overly apprehensive they're not courageous anymore they become unduly hesitant and strangely it slows down their abilities and they now begin to make poor judgments may the lord deliver us from all of this in jesus name and so what do we have to do we have to filter what we hear because what you hear shapes what you how you think what you hear shapes how you think and how you and how you think predetermines how you interpret things and how you respond to them so you're seeing a lot of trouble going on in the world and all you see is trouble 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 meanwhile some people who have filtered what they're hearing are seeing trouble but they're seeing opportunities in the midst of the trouble it's a matter of what you hear shaping what you think and how what you think predetermines how you interpret things and may the lord is trying to help us and the help of the lord will profit us in jesus mighty name I, I want to give credit to um, a distinguished uh, clinical psychologist whom, um, as, as I meditated on the psychological uh, trouble that this is bringing to us, I, I called her up and we exchanged um, ideas and she put me in the knowledge of the science of the psychology. I want to thank you, um, clinical psychologist Pauline Uche Okafo. Um, I'm going to be sharing some of your videos that were very helpful to dealing with the trauma of the, uh, in our psyche hallelujah but i want to leave you with um a scripture a comforting scripture from the lord and that scripture is found in isaiah 41 and verse 10 and what does it say it says don't panic i am with you there's no need to fear for i am your god i will give you strength i will help you isaiah 41 verse 10 the message translation of the Bible. Can I hear amen? And the best part of it, four words, I will help you. So as we navigate forward in our preparation, we have the help of God and angelic assistance. So we will make it in Jesus' mighty name. Our first contributor for this evening is Yomi Badejo Okusoya. And he's an accomplished businessman He's the outgoing president of the APRA, that is African Public Relations um, Association. <laughs> Hallelujah. And um, he's an accomplished businessman, the outgoing president of the Association of Public Relations, uh, African Public Relations Practitioners. He's also the group MD of CMC Connect Perception Managers, and he's an associate pastor with me in grace assembly and so i want you to be expectant for the practical help he's going to render by the grace of god from experience from revelation and very importantly for from a good heart this is not about showing that we know anything it is really about helping everyone that wants to be helped to navigate out of this quagmire by the grace of god into the new things and doing it well, nothing missing, nothing broken. In fact, things better to the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. Welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, well, I have introduced you, so I just want to 
unleash you to release all the help from the Lord that God has equipped you with. Thank you. Uh, we're, uh, you're welcome. And uh, we celebrate you. I want to thank Grace Assembly and the senior pastor for giving me this platform to address members of mm -hmm. the church. What I'll be sharing will be my own perspectives on how to prepare for the new. They are not, by no means exhaustive. And they, if you think along the same lines that I am, you can actually add more to them. And I look forward to the interactive session that we'll have either today or subsequently, uh, where I would also be learning from you. So whatever is missing, you can add. My contribution will be in terms of business, like the senior pastor has introduced us, uh, has introduced me at the beginning. Um, and it is business and economies that have suffered significantly uh, as a result of this pandemic. They've been uh, two, perhaps, of the greatest victims if we take away health. I'll therefore share with you a few engaging, a few tips that we have already engaged in preparing for the new uh, uh, with you. But before I do that, let me make it clear that even though I'm talking about business, the foundation of everything you do as a Christian is the word of God. Every human endeavor is the word of God. Any human endeavor that you are engaging in. And there are two ways that you can react to the word, word of God. You are either walking in it or you are walking away from it. So I try to locate God in everything that I do. Whether things that happen to me, good or bad, or just like that, I try and see where God is. Now, if I were to ask a question, how many of us have asked God, have said, look, I just wish things would just stop for a minute for me to catch my breath. You know, it seems as if the world is moving so fast, I just want to catch my breath so I can catch up with everyone else. And I'm going to lead you to Joshua 10. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, uh, Sorry? Hello? No, go on, go on. Yes. A little Joshua 12, and I'm going to refer you to verses 12 and 13. And I prepared it, Joshua 12, 12 and 13. And um, for reason of time, I will not read it. You can note the scripture, and subsequently you can read it. Now, what happened? God caused the sun and the moon to stand still so that the children of Israel, led by Joshua, could claim victory over their enemies. Joshua prayed to God and said, let the moon stop. Let the sun stand still. Let the moon stand still. Now, the enemies we may be talking about this time around may be purposelessness. It may be stagnation. It may be um, inability to just get what you really, God has designed you to be. But if the Israelites had not taken advantage of the standstill of the sun and the moon, perhaps they would never have prevailed. God gave them that opportunity and they used it wisely and they prevailed over their enemies. My question to you today is that how are you taking advantage of your standstill? For some reason or the other, God has caused you to stand still, for time to stand still for you. Are you busy criticizing Buhari's economic policy? Looking at what Songwoli is doing and perhaps even saying, no, don't mind the grace assembly, they only gave us small rise and so on and so forth. When you could use this opportunity, luckily the senior pastor mentioned, he talked about challenges and what works with challenges. That the challenge has a twin or challenges they has a twin. It's called opportunity. Now you know the challenge, locate your opportunity. I'm quickly going to talk to you about um, how what we have done in our own business um, to do to get ahead of to prepare ourselves for the new. First and foremost, we ask ourselves where exactly we are. And we spent about four and a half hours yesterday, my lead team, looking at our performance in quarter one and then projecting for the rest of the year. The concerning the widow, what the man of God asked the widow, he said, what do you have in your house? She thought she had nothing, but it, save for a jar of oil. And it was that jar of oil that turned into the surplus that she was able 
to operate with. Today, there's something that you are holding and that can take you. Just like the same way in business, it, it, the way it works spiritually, it works also in business. It is the resources that you have now that can take you to the next level in terms of adequately harnessing, adequately harnessing those resources, working with those resources, and multiplying them. So let me quickly say how that can take you. All right. In our own, what we did, having determined where we are, looking at all the resources that we have on hand, and we then say, where do we want to go to? What we did was that we built four, about three scenarios, the, from the, first, the best scenario to the worst scenario, that if this were to happen, this is what will happen. If this were to happen, it, across a very broad spectrum. Now, arising from that, and then knowing what we have, what we did was we have evolved a five-point COVID respond agenda. And the five-point COVID respond agenda, I'm going to quickly go through that with you, or go through them with you. One is budget reduction. And I've said that this is not the time to embark on any white elephant. Uh, I think I heard uh, Pastor Conrad also talk about that, that you must subject any investment you need to do at this moment to you know a lot of scrutiny so first and foremost you've got to scale back because you don't know what is ahead of you in terms of business number two cost rationalization and what i mean that i've mentioned that that you must say to yourself that your expenditure must form a certain percentage of the totality of your income so maybe when things were good you are spending 50% on salaries. I'm just giving an example for a service organization. You want to maintain that 50% one way or the other. So part of it could be that you would have to speak to your staff um, to see how you guys can uh, agree. So including maybe this is not the time for you to pay allowances or to ask for allowances and so on and so forth. Let me give you an example. One of our clients um, who we have a monthly retainer of about two million has come back to us and they've said for now they can only pay us 250,000. What? Yes, 250 from two million. They can only pay us monthly. Now, they're good clients of ours. Uh, our, our contract came up and they just said, Look, we don't want to let you go, but we'll pay you a nominal fee until things get better. How do we work around that? So all that must cascade and come somewhere. Now, the other one I'll talk about is business development and product remix. So I was online and I found a lady who makes wedding gowns. Guess what she does now? She makes face masks. She, she makes make a, make a wedding, she makes dresses, wedding gowns. Now she makes face masks. Because the truth of the matter is that <laughs> nobody's buying and wearing dresses anymore. <laughs> nobody's buying. So she's put the machines to use. She's put the skills that she has to use. The bottom line of what you have is, excuse me, you're a tailor. Whichever way, fashion designer, you're a tailor. So you must be adaptive in your skills. This is not the time that somebody will say, hey, oh, uh, do so 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 and then you say no that's not my area this is not my core area i'm not i'm not saying you should be a jack of all trade and master of not all but i'm saying to you that you've got to develop more core competencies joseph had the god-given talent of uh, interpreting dreams but when he was in isolation he came out with the man taught talent of rationing food so, in this new age where we are going in, your God, your God-given talent is just the beginning of what you have to deliver. If you focus on it and say, "Oh, this is where God said I," this is what God gave me, and I'm remaining here, you may find out that sooner or later you may be out of business. So, you've got to be adaptive to what you are doing, uh, to what the market is saying. So if you are sewing wedding dresses, you are making wedding gowns, and what is required right now are face masks, 
please start a line of face masks. If you have a business that is going into uh, uh, um, maybe doing things that has to do with hand sanitizers, because the I have a report on consumer spend, it's going to change. People are going to spend more on hand sanitizers. They are going to spend more on uh, wipes. They are going to spend more on things that can promote their hygiene as against the thing. So everybody goes out. Lagos State has now said compulsory. If you go out, you must wear a face mask. It's not. Is that not the time for you to start making face masks? All right. Now, I, I, I would also like to talk and then maybe finish it off here. Uh, I've talked about the cash. I've talked about use the period wisely. This is the time for you to do something you've never done before. Um, again, I'm going to put myself and my... Uh, my I've, I've always said to myself, I run a service business. I'd like to die as an industrialist. So right now, I'm working on a business plan on how to set up an industry. My wife and I. Because... We just found that this downtime, we can convert it to good use. We've had the details, we've collected so much material on this industry we'd like to develop, but we kept it somewhere. So over this last two weeks, we brought out the papers, we're looking at them, we're, you know, we've spoken to experts who can help us and so on. So that maybe by the end of this thing, we can say that something tangible we brought out. And what we are going into or what we desire to go into is an essential. It is an essential that whether the economy goes down or is dipping, people will still use it. The work I do right now is perhaps some people may say, no, let's bring it out to 250, let's bring it. But food will still sell any day. Um, then I want to finish off by saying, let me end with the words of that founding father of, the America, of America's democracy, President Abraham Lincoln. He said, the only way you can predict the future is by creating it. The only way you can predict the future is by creating it. My charge to every one of us that is listening this evening is that let us go and create that future. It is waiting for us. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, YBO. Uh, thank you, Pastor Rami, for sharing from your heart and from the word. I mean, I like the practical nuggets, the low-hanging fruits. For instance, you have said that no matter what your competence was, don't get stuck. You have to evolve. Um, that's one of the low-hanging fruits that helps people know that we can inch our way forward. You already have the machines anyway. If nobody's having church weddings anyway, they're not going to be writing way by now. And you will have the white materials. You start cutting them into pieces and make face masks. Yeah, can I make a comment? A friend of ours yeah. that you know was yesterday was the his the first anniversary of his passing, the wife, the passing away of his wife. And ordinarily we would you know it would have been a big elaborate event in the sense that they would have gone to church, they'd have play, paid for florist, um, probably gone to the uh, graveside, opened her grave. Even the area boys that stand outside the cemetery would have collected money from them, then they would have had a reception. And then they would have cooked food, they would have rented chairs, they would have gotten a musician, they would have used an event center. But guess what? Yesterday, we had a memorial service of close to 500 people from all parts of the world. And perhaps the only money they spent was data. 500 people. So which means that that entire value chain has been wiped out. I also mentioned as a, as a to you, I also let mentioned me, let to you, sir, another person, me, one of your lecturers in uh, law school, Uncle Kole Abayomi, who died two weeks ago. And I mean, saying on this, one of the things they are thinking about is that how do we bury him? Should we cremate him so that we can bring the ash back home or something like that? And I'm saying to you, before, that was a whole industry. Somebody would have sold a coffin. They would have paid Virgin or uh, British Airways to bring the body back. Now, if they do go ahead with what they're saying, they can actually put him in a bag and bring him home. So, things That's right. changed. And as a matter of fact, let me, 
let me let me engage you in um something i saw on tv i can't remember the program was um they had ali baba and some um very accomplished uh comedians and you know what they said they said as long as people are not having events we have no work exactly is that oh well no is, let me put it like this it they've is, got to do all the more they've got to not change yeah. Um, um, but the, the truth is that you know that some of them are waiting, and all they're doing is waiting for things to go back to normal. Supposing exactly. things never happen, supposing people become so petrified of large gatherings, it never happens anymore. So when it's a small gathering, what do you need an MC for, and exactly. all that? So exactly, it, it, it takes us back to the psychology or the psychological evolution that we all need to subscribe to, not to be stuck in your mind on how it used to be in the areas of your, of your experience. As a matter of fact, I remember talking to you and you said something to me that really blew me away. You said in your public relations practice and so on, you are going to move into another area of, how do you call it? Um, crisis. crisis. Crisis management. Crisis management. That's what I was saying, Pastor. You've got to look for crisis. those things that, sorry, crisis communication. That is, crisis communication. Yes, because every organization now is worried. Only this morning, one of my uh, meetings, we we're talking to one of our big clients, and we're writing a crisis document. Because what if one of their staff contracts COVID? What if this happens? What if that happens? So we've got to be able to trigger um, the chain of events that will help curb crisis. And all of us are in a crisis exactly. in one way or the other. You know, what, what I want to drive at is the, 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 the principle that you are operating and is helping you not to get stuck. You are a public relations practitioner, perception management. And so you used to do a lot of things, but now it's crisis all over the place and you developed another aspect of your business called crisis communication because that is what is on ground now. We cannot ignore what is on ground and insist that we're waiting for everything to come or our doorstep to make us happy. We have to jump out there and find value we can add and using what we already have and reconfigure it to supply the needs and that's what business is all about. I exactly. think a lot of it still goes back to the psychological uh, problem of being stuck in a certain way. And it's particularly so for people in their middle ages and old age. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, but okay. if you old dog learn new tricks, will die young. So <laughs> if you don't want to... For, uh, we're evaluating our performance. So rather than evaluate our performance at the end of the month, we're doing weekly evaluation, we're doing daily evaluation. And finally, engagement of technology. Without technology, we cannot move forward. And therefore, we've decided that if there's any investment to be done, it will be in technology. Let me give you a, a, a quick example. I had several meetings today, and one of our biggest clients has said to us that for the end, till now, from now to the end of the year, we shouldn't come to the office again. The office is in Ikohi, and we are in Ikeja. <laughs> they are probably worried about bringing people into their office. And from now on, all meetings, weekly, that we have just bought a brand new fleet to service. They said, don't come to our office again. All meetings will be online. Allow me to add a few more thoughts to the above. One, you must unlearn the past. You must relearn the present and you must unlearn the future. You must unlearn the past. You must relearn the present and you must forlearn the future. Known in my life, I'm not sure that over the last two weeks, I've learned about technology. I have a very able executive assistant and every time I'm in my office, even to almost switch on my system, I will scream her name and she's there and she sorts me out. Unfortunately, for the last three weeks, I haven't had the uh, pleasure of her service. We are on a, uh, well, uh, we're on a, we're on a business meeting today, and she's on, by the way. She's on here. And she said to me, she said, you know what, MD, you haven't called me in the last three weeks. 
and I'm worried that my job will be on the line because they're not <laughs> going to need me. So I said, you better go and relearn yourself. So do other things apart from what you were doing to me before. This is the time. Not, this is the, not the time for you to be an island. Listen more and talk less. There are fresh challenges that require fresh resources. So sometimes experience may not even be the best teacher at this moment. A lot of us we are adopters. We are, we, we, we are adopters to what is going on, technology. So it may be the what you call the natives. They've got a much better perspective on how to do this. I know that over the last two weeks, the senior pastor and I, we've struggled over technology and we're trying to talk and so on and so forth. But we're still learning. So when you are building a team, your COVID agenda response team, bring young people in there that ordinarily may not have the experience, but they have a fresh perspective to what you are doing. They can bring in new ideas. Keep your cash. Well, in this period, cash may be king. Use this period wisely. You spend How you spend most of your time in this period determines who you are. If you spend most of your time sleeping, watching television, playing games, fiddling, uh, gisting with friends, or even surfing the social media, let me tell you something, that is who you are. Now, I'm not saying those things are wrong, but you must do the right thing at the right time. Right now, divide your day and make it very productive. Learn new things. I've spent, I, I think this is about my third webinar today that I'm on, because you find out that, and a lot of them are free. The one that was on earlier on today was supported by the Harvard Business School. If I were to pay for Harvard Business School, I don't know how much, but they had their resources in there. You must learn to write, read, thank you, build, and innovate. I want to thank you, YBO. This is the most we can do for now. I, I, I celebrate everyone that's come on board. The Bible says, um, in Second Chronicles, I know the plans that I have for you, plans for good and not evil. But those are plans. We can subvert the plans for good by not evolving when the times change. We have to deal with the trauma that we feel that we don't like it, but we can't stay there. We're going to continue on this platform for it's a series on preparing for the new. The new has come to stay. It will not bury us. We're going to ride this wave. God is going to help us like we see it made to us, and we're going to do well. With great men like Pastor Conrad, Pastor Yomi, myself, and many more people that will come on this platform, we will learn how to take the baby steps forward, and this will bring a little more confidence, and we're able to, to, we're going to be able to do more. There's always something in your hand. It may just be the phone, the smartphone you have in your hand, has more capacity than you know. You need to find the new, the right softwares that can enhance the potential that you have, you need to have the right conversation with the right people. If people you're talking to are always talking about the past, you need to increase the, the, the sphere of your communication. If people are always talking about the problems, if they will not look into the, the possibilities that the problems come with, you need to edit how much time you spend in that circle. Because what you see begins to shape how you think. And what you think predetermines how you respond to things. And your response could be negative, it could be positive. No matter how much God wants to help us, we have to align. And my prayer as a pastor would be, Father, as you have purpose in your heart, through good times and tough times, to help us. Father, help us even now to be able to learn, unlearn and learn new things and posture ourselves and ride the waves of this season so that we can glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. I look forward to seeing you at the next of the, uh, in the series of preparing for the new. Please post your uh, your questions. We will answer them at the next meeting. Uh, this is uh, Conrad Adigwe, who is a management and IT consultant, founder and CEO of Sophia ERP. An associate pastor in Grace St. Churches. Uh, I, I thank you for coming in to render help to the children of God, particularly in the area of technology, when we know that the new is going to be driven. 
Honestly, 75, 80% by technology. Welcome, um, Conrad. Please, you have the floor. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, I want to say thank you to the senior pastor for bringing me on board. Um, it's been a pleasure to listen to you and to Pastor Yomi speak. Um, we all know we live in unprecedented times and um, the whole world is currently disrupted. Just like uh, Pastor Yomi said, we have to take, um, we have to take our roots from scripture and my scripture of reference as we start this conversation is First Chronicles 12.32. And we know that the sons of Issachar understood the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. And so the essence of this session is to help us understand how we can leverage technology to, um, to transverse through this pandemic era. What is the role of technology as we all try to navigate through this difficult time? You would agree with me that every business, every government, every industry has been disrupted. Nobody saw this coming. As a matter of fact, we know that the heads of governments in several countries downplay the impact of what we're seeing right now. But we all see what is happening. The aviation industry is disrupted. The construction industry is, in, is disrupted. If you're in the hospitality industry, I mean, you know what is going on out there. The way we have lived before now is gone. The reality that we used to have is totally gone. We're living in a new reality. And technology has a great role to play in how we're able to transit through this period so we can gain ahead of the, um, the pandemic wave. Now, I'm going to be talking to businesses and individuals. As a business, what must you do? Now, the first thing I need you to realize as a business is there is always a way out. Even as an individual, there is always a way out. Digital technology or digital transformation, as we call it, let me just define it. Digital transformation is the use of new, fast, and frequently changing digital technology to solve problems. The way we live has changed the way we communicate. People now communicate through Zoom. People are using Microsoft Teams. Churches are engaging their members through technology tools. Governments are meeting through technology platforms. Business to business conversations are going on through, you know, technology tools. I mean, you can see some marriages going on through Zoom. Some people are doing naming ceremony. I just spoke with a client now and his brother had a naming ceremony some days ago and it was all through Zoom. So technology is redefining the way we live. And trust me, even when this pandemic is over, we're not going to be able to go back to how, I mean, we're not going to go back to how things used to be. And so we have to, at this point in time, embrace digital transformation as it relates to our business. Now, there are four types of digital transformation that we need to look at. In starting up our digital transformation journey, we have to be comprehensive. Now, this is a time where businesses are latching onto every technology platform that they can see and that is being recommended to them. The first thing I would like to say is your digital transformation strategy must have line of sight with your business strategy. You can't just begin to adopt technology from all over the place without thinking about how it's fitting with your organizational business strategy. As a matter of fact, Digital transformation tools or platforms will not work if your organization has not created a culture of productivity. And so you have to create an environment where even the technology you are putting in place will thrive. Now, the first type of um, trans digital transformation we need to talk about, maybe not today, is process transformation. What is your process like? The traditional way of running your business, you can't run like that anymore. This is a time where, you know, big does not necessarily beat small. This is a time where small can outrun, outpace big. Why? Because they have agility. This is a time where you have to look at your internal business process. 
if you spend hours and days just trying to um just trying to um you know process the different aspects of your business then you have to think again now the second part is the business model transformation what sort of business model are you running how technology can help you gain the lead the third part of um, digital transformation is domain transformation do you want to cross into a new domain do you want to look at new markets do you want to enter into new markets with technology i can tell you for free and most of you have heard while people were langu languishing and businesses were trying to wonder what to do a platform we are all used to zoom made four billion dollars in just three months as we speak, the United Kingdom government have predicted that um, the, the kingdom will lose or the economy will drop by about 35% this year. I mean, a drop that they haven't seen in about three centuries. And so this is not the time to stay in what you think you are used to and think that that's going to work. No, you have young people, you have innovators across different industries disrupting how businesses are done. We all know what happened in the Uber instance. We all know what happened to Canon camera many years ago. Now, this kind of disruption we're seeing now is the kind that we have never seen before. Why? Because of its scale and because of the speed of change of technology. I mean, you wake up all of a sudden and an industry is gone. You wake up all of a sudden and you have lost relevance. The fourth digital transformation we need to look at is cultural and organizational transformation how is your organization um, what is the organizational build of your company i mean what, what is the cultural um uh, what is a productive organization culture of your organization do you have a culture of collaboration do you have a culture of you know um innovation do you have a culture of ideation? So even when you're bringing in digital transformation tools and platforms and all that, you need to have the culture to receive all of this. Now, some of the key things I'll leave us with this evening because of time. First is we need to, we need to ensure that our organizations create great agility. What is business agility? Business agility is, the, um, is your ability to understand your environment, what is happening around you, The game has changed. The people who are going to get ahead are the people who can respond quickly to change. Another thing as a business you need to look at is how do you execute quickly? Without digital technology, you'll find out that your execution pace will be very slow. While you are still thinking, while you are still deliberating, while you are still analyzing, some other organization has moved ahead and taken a large chunk of your market share. For instance, you have a lot, of, a lot of companies right now who are, I mean, everybody's locked in, and you have a lot of organizations who need to maintain their work, and they need to access their documents. If you haven't embraced cloud technology at this point, you'll find out that you are stuck. You're waiting for the government to call off the lockdown so you can go access your files and, you know, get along with your business. Can I can I interrupt you a minute? Um, if there is any um, phone that is on um, that is not airpiece, is going to continue to disrupt our enjoying what you're saying on your end. Please check. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, please go. Yeah. All right. So this is a time to integrate technology into your business operations. No matter what you are doing, no matter the industry you are in, technology must be at the core of your strategy. Now, can I can I can I come in? Um, yes, sir. Those um, five um, processes, digital strategy, should sync with our business goals. Uh, we should digitalize our business processes. We should digitalize our business models and so on. The main transformation cultural and organizational transformation. Can you give us baby steps? Because that's great. Baby steps for people to be able to where to start from and perhaps where we go after that. 
Okay, take for instance, let's talk about process uh, transformation. This, um, you can transform your business process by simply doing what we call um, a business audit, a business process audit. What does that mean? It's very simple. How do you currently run your operations? How does your workflow move from point A to point B to point C to point D? What is your decision-making process within the organization? For instance, if um, within your organization you have a procurement process where um, for you to purchase anything, your staff have to fill a form and take it to their supervisor and the supervisor will have to approve and then they take it to the procurement officer he has to approve and then they take it <laughs> processes you'll find out that you're spending two days just procuring basic necessities within the organization now the first thing we need to do when we talk about process um, audit is to look at all of your processes and look at ways to streamline. So there are certain things you need to cut off. Now, before you automate that particular process, you may ask yourself, why do I need to go from point A to point B to C to D? Why can't I go from point A to point D? Do I need B and C? Now, it is not a difficult thing, you know, to do, but just to understand, you know, be real with yourself about how your organization operates. And so when you map out all the key business processes within your organization, I mean, staff want to go on leave, they fill a form and they take it to somebody who has to take, who has to sign and take it to another person who has to sign. And if that person has traveled, nothing can happen on that leave request. And so you have to, you know, realistically look at all of your key business processes and identify where the bottlenecks are. Sometimes to take a simple decision, we have to wait for Mr. A, Mr. X, Mr. D. Why? Because that person has to be around to take the decision. And if the person is busy, then we can't get ahead. So it's as simple as looking at how your business operates, your key I business I, I understand that, and I'm sure um, our viewers are grateful for that thought. I'm beginning to think that when you say that the future is going to be technologically driven, what I feel is that a lot of people's knowledge of technology does not be on their phone and their time, that they used to do very mundane things. How can we take what we already have and begin to use discover the real potential of these um, things without necessarily, because nobody has money to be buying new things to start off with. Take the phone, for instance. It's a technologically advanced device. How much more can we do with it? I think social media, Facebook, which is good, but how can it be used individually for small business or personal businesses more effectively? If you have tab, a lot of people don't know the power that tab has. They have not discovered it. Can you help us in that regard before we come to the bigger things? How to use what we already have more effectively? All right. Take for instance, we are all locked in into our homes, and we all have our phones. We have the internet. We have our tab and all that device. What can we do? There are lots of free training that we can have access to right now as we speak a lot of people i mean a lot of organizations have created free tools that we can begin to discover using our mobile devices there are a lot of okay. programs things are uh, being found yes now okay one of the things we can do is to condense this this presentation and share so we can put all this link the link of where we can find some of these tools. For instance, Harvard Business School has come up with a set of programs, a set of trainings that a lot of people can take at this time. Because it's a time where you need to skill up. It's a time where you need to upgrade yourself. It's a time where businesses are laying off the weak link within their organization. And the first people they are going to look at are the people that don't have enough skill. 
So this is a time to become multi-skilled. This is a time to pick up extra knowledge, you know, that is related to your industry and related to your work. So with the use of your phone and your mobile device or your laptop as it is, you will be able to gain access to free courses online now. We will okay, share... Thank you, thank you for right. that. We will, uh, you will please send in all those links and we're going to attach them when we share this video after the live broadcast. Uh, I also want to ask you, um, for instance, uh, let me use our organization uh, as, as, a, as an example. We've, I, we have learned to use Zoom for our meetings now. Up until this point in time, I didn't know anything called Zoom. Um, and I think it's important for you to uh, identify the applications, the apps that some people need to begin to download and begin to use. I use this opportunity to say to all our members and viewers, please download Zoom because that's the only platform I see that we can have a more effective interactive uh, uh, Bible study and then we can actually pray together on Zoom rather than any other platform. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a technological guru. Let's hear uh, Conrad Agugwe as he advises us the critical applications and what they do for different aspects of our business life. Um, over to you. Okay. Um, remember, um, I mentioned earlier that whatever technological tool that we're going to use in our businesses has to um, be in alignment with our overall business strategy. For instance, okay. yes, so some organizations already have um, already work in a Microsoft based environment. So for such people, Microsoft Teams might be the go to place for them to use for teams microsoft teams my team yes team with an s teams yeah might be the go-to place for them to be able to collaborate with their staff and you know um discuss share documents have meetings like this now zoom is a fantastic platform and it's easy to use you really don't have to um um you don't have to be so tech savvy to use zoom and one of the good things about Zoom is Zoom is not enclosed in any major large software, unlike Microsoft Teams that is embedded in their Microsoft, you know, um, cloud system. At the moment, Microsoft um, is offering a six-month free, um, free platform for organizations to use um, Microsoft Teams and other related tools so they can... Um, communicate, collaborate, learn, and all that, they're offering a six-month platform. So if, for instance, you um, offer training as an organization, you're in, you're in HR business and you're in training, um, you can use Microsoft Teams along with other clients who already have Microsoft running in their environment. Otherwise, Teams is also a platform you, know, you can use. There are other platforms like Slack for the same purpose, um, Cisco, WebEx, you know, but again, you have to be able to um, relate what you are using now and um, uh, and make sure that it ties in with your future goal. For instance, a lot of companies are going to be making investment in technology. Now, before you make that investment in technology, you have to understand the different elements that work with the, the your business strategy you know for instance you want to go to the cloud you want to save your files to the cloud you want your staff to work on a proposal for instance you know which one do you use do you use OneDrive or do you use some other platform by some other vendor so the the platform you go to will be dependent on your business strategy I mean where you want to stay well thank, thank you um, Conrad um, I would like you, uh, speaking on behalf of most of our viewers, to also make recommendations for um, the, the kind of um, applications for like people that want the business from home, they don't have a lot of staff, they may not even have any staff, people that do supplies and so on, the applications that can easily be downloaded onto the phone they already have. So there's no um, entry point expense, really, as so to speak, downloading that to 
bring in more efficiency um, along with the information also the links to training and so on if you will do that for us that would be very very helpful I, my time is gone i want to really appreciate you i'm going to let you have the last word and i'm going to bring back uh your for him to be able to round up more effectively uh current all right, so my last words, I mean, I'll say four things, four golden rules for digital transformation. Rule one, deliver easy, effective, emotional customer experiences with whatever you're planning. Rule two, focus operations on things customers value. Rule three, build platforms and partnerships to accelerate and scale. And the last one, innovate at the intersection of experiences and business operations. If we can stay with this four golden rule, we'll find out that we'll be able to transit through this process and we'll find ourselves right at the top. Very good, very thank you very much. You know what I'm going to propose that everyone downloads Zoom, we can have a bigger a platform and a more relaxed platform where we're gonna spend like two hours and everyone can ask live questions and we're gonna see. The, the contributor, you're going to see the, the viewer, and we can interact. If you can do that, we will download Zoom. We will let you know when that can be so that your your pe peculiar um, technological needs and troubles and dysfunctionalities can be addressed live, and others can benefit from that. I want to thank you, Conrad. The Lord reward your labor of love. And